Z-Speed back with another install. Today we're going to take a break on the 350Z and we're going to work on this 2001 Pontiac Bonneville. We're going to replace the window regulator on the driver's side rear. But this also applies for a Buick LeSabre, Pontiac Grand Am, and most of the GM cars are very similar. So this will hopefully help you if you've got one of those cars. But specifically, we'll be working on the 2001 Pontiac Bonneville rear regulator. So, let's get started. So we'll start off by removing the panel itself. And I'm gonna use my hands, but you may need a plastic panel removal tool to help pop it loose, but I've done it a few times here and it's pretty easy to get around my fingers around the edge. So you're just gonna go all the way around the perimeter and pop it loose. There are two internal clips that I'll show you a closer view of, but I've already removed those at this point. So I'm just gonna show you how to disconnect the wiring from the window switch to the window module. And it's right there, you can just Push it, push it in with your fingertips and remove that and set the panel aside. And I will now go over a couple clips that are much harder to remove that I've already done previously. So let's take a look at that in more detail. Right there are the two clips and basically they slide, supposed to slide straight up. And as you can see, they're being very stubborn here and you really have to take the whole door panel and jiggle it side to side, back and forth, and slowly move these two clips up until they break free. And as you can see, it's quite hard, but there they go. Boom, it's popped loose. There's one there and one here, and they're connected to the door panel right here. Those two clips pop into these two brackets. And so once you get the, door, the green tabs loose, which go all the way around the perimeter of the panel, you have to deal with those two clips and it's quite hard. You will have to jiggle for a while. Those are the easy ones right there. They just pop right out. But once you do get those loose, you can remove the door panel. And I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna take you a little bit and you will have to work on it. But once you get them loose, you can take those out with a needle nose plier and place them back in. Now we're going to remove the water shield here and it's got some sticky goo that's basically waterproof and that keeps any water from getting inside to the cabin. So you may want to take your time on that and before you can completely remove that water shield, you will have to remove the window uh, module, window automatic window module and push it through the water shield here. shield off we have access to these two 10 millimeter bolts through these holes right here here's one it's kind of hard to see but there'll be a little better view later in the video and here's the other the window has to be pulled all the way up so you may have to manually do that to access these two bolts all we want to do is loosen these just a little bit so we can release the regulator from the actual window itself so we'll do that now. There 
Now we're ready to remove three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the window regulator and motor assembly into the door frame. So those come out relatively easily, but you may need a little help on actually pushing the regulator out of the door frame. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. As you can see, I was able to easily push the bottom of the regulator out. But when it came to the very top bolt up top, I was having some difficulty because it was kind of wedged in there. So I'm gonna take a very large screwdriver and just give a little bit of force to pop it loose and out it comes. But you have to be very careful not to actually wedge the screwdriver against the window or you could shatter it. So pay close attention to the location of your actual window and um, you should be able to use that screwdriver to pop it loose. Now we have easy access to remove the window regulator and motor assembly through the right side of the panel. As you can see, it comes out relatively easy. And all we have left to do is disconnect the wiring from the motor itself. Now that we've got it out, I've already separated my motor from the window regulator, and it's just three bolts and it comes loose pretty easily. Since my regulator was broken, I'll be replacing this part, but you can also replace the motor as well if you have an issue with that. I got a new regulator from Auto Parts Warehouse at a reasonable price. I believe it was around 64 bucks, something like that. And it also came with some clips for the door in case you've damaged any when you were taking the panel off earlier. Um, we will be pulling the window up, but I want to get back to the regulator. So what we want to do now is take the window regulator and push the bracket that mounts to the window all the way up because we have the window all the way up. So once you get that done, we're really ready to reattach the motor to the regulator. So what we want to do is actually just apply a little grease around the splines so the window motor can slide in relatively easy into the regulator. Then we're going to bolt the window motor back down again. Now we're going to take the two brackets and loosen those where they attach to the window. As you can see, there's two rubber sleeves that the window fits into to keep it from cracking. So make sure that those are opened up and ready to slide into the window. I'm going to keep, try to get my window to stay up, but it won't. So you might want to use a piece of tape to hold it to the door frame. Once you get to stay up, we're ready to reinsert the motor and regulator assembly back in the same way we came out. So just take your time and slide it in very easily. Once you get it in, the probably the biggest obstacle will be to try to get those two rubber sleeves around the bottom of the window. Once you get those to line up, then you're able to take the regulator and pop the three bolts back into the door frame. After a little 
little bit of work, I was able to get all three of the studs back in the door frame, and now you're ready to put the 10 millimeter nuts back on and tighten those up and just check to make sure that the sleeves are around the window correctly. Once that's completed, you can reattach the electrical fitting to the window motor. Now that we got the motor attached, we can use the front window switch to push the window all the way up so we can access those two 10 millimeter bolts again and tighten up the window to the regulator. Of course, you want to be very careful not to over tighten and crack the window. So just snug it up and we can check later to make sure it's snug enough. I'll show you how to do that before we're done. Now we can reinsert this star foam insert that I didn't show you that I removed earlier, but this just slides in and keeps the window from rattling when it's down. It just has three push pins and this easily reattached. Now we're ready to reattach the water shield, but before we can do that, we need to grab the window module and slide it back through the water shield. So go ahead and do that now. And we're gonna slide it on through, and then you're able to put the water shield back on. Just make sure that the water shield is sealed, and you're gonna to wanna to run your fingers all the way around the water shield to make sure that that sticky tar-like substance is nice and matted down. And there's also two push pins that attach to the top of the water shield. You can replace those too. Now that you've got the water shield, properly matted down and sealed all the way around the door, we can go ahead and reinstall the window module back onto the studs and take the 10 millimeter nuts and tighten those down. place the door panel we want to check the window to make sure it's secure to the regulator so I'm just gonna grab it and gently tug at it to make sure it's not gonna come loose if it does just peel down the water shield and tighten up the two nuts on the regulator a little tighter but mine seems to be pretty good so I'm gonna leave it there and now we're ready to reattach the door panel around the door handle and it might be a lot easier to put the door panel back on if you remove that. So now we're going to try to align a thin metal lip that's at the top of the door panel and slide it down into the ridge along the top of the door. There is the metal lip right there and I'm pointing to and here is the ridge we're going to set it into. Once you get it in there, you can tap it down and it should lock in. So mine locked in pretty easily. I got lucky the first time. You may have to try that maneuver a couple times before you get to click in. So now we're aligning all of the green tabs and we're going, once we get them all aligned, we're going to click them in one by one to secure the door panel back to the door frame. At this point, all we have left to do is reinsert the plastic frame around the door handle and we're basically done. 
you can sit back and congratulate yourself now because you just saved a whole lot of money and it really wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you out. And as always, please like and subscribe and Z-Speed will be back soon for another video. Until then, keep on repairing. <laughs>